Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. This is Julie and today as promised we are doing a fun mixed media craft with the laboratory glass flasks that I picked up from Dollar Tree a couple hauls ago. We will be making a version of one of these bottles. I've been having a play with the bottles and some craft supplies that I had on hand and I came up with two different versions but we this is the one um, that we will be doing today. But let me show you what I did with the first one I had to play with. I happen to have some vintage pharmacy labels in my stash and my daughter Taylor she actually helped me we scanned them and we shrunk them down this was the first bottle I came up with I played around with some stamps I had because it said mothballs I thought it would be really cute to do a little uh, make a little handmade die cut, which I did, that's kind of a butterfly or looks like a moth. I added beads and some dyed trims and a button that's all rusted and decayed looking. So this was the first one I came up with. I was just playing, I was just experimenting, but I wanted to make this project a little bit more accessible with things that you likely all have on hand so this was the second version I came up with. And this is the one that we will be uh, making together today. So the two main focals, of course, are these, this two pack of glass laboratory flasks that are from Dollar Tree, showed in my fall Halloween haul. But if you haven't yet picked them up, I think it probably is worthwhile to go check out your Dollar Tree. When I visited the new Dollar Tree that just opened um, closer to our home, they had a ton of Halloween left. If you missed getting these at the beginning of the month, I definitely would go back and check because you, you never know. The other supply, main supply that we will be using today to make our labels is the Stampers Anonymous Tim Holtz Collection. This is the Field Notes stamp set. I will be linking all the other supplies down below. Okay, so the first thing we want to do, as you can see, I have some cheesecloth and some cotton fiber. Um, I, made, I made a handmade ribbon. So let's get started on some of the details and then we'll start putting our bottle together. We are going to alcohol dye a piece of cheesecloth, and then this, just this piece of cotton, if you have any muslin or white cotton laying around. Certainly, if you already have something that's a colorway that you love, you can swap that in. So I'm gonna grab these homemade alcohol inks. Um, I will link that video down below. So this one is a brown tone. And we're just gonna give this a little bit of a spritz. Coffee would work really well too to get that brown tone. This one we made together. So this is the orange that we made together on the video. And I'm gonna give that a little bit of spray here. Oops, that's real orange, huh? And then this one I made uh, once I had taped the video, I said I was going to experiment with making black. And I wanted to point out that, it, and it does make sense now that I've done it, the black Sharpies come out with a purple tone, which is actually very, very cool. So let's spray that on. Can you see that? Yeah, that purple color that we're getting. All right, that looks really good. I'm going to grab a pair of tweezers here and just kind of move this fabric around just to make sure I have all the pieces and parts covered. Also in the spots like here with the orange, I'm going to mix in some of the other colors just so it's not so orangey. It comes out looking a little bit grungy. And let's get rid of that, that white part there. Oh, 
Okay, that is looking good. Let's look at our cheesecloth. Let's do kind of the same. Let's cover up that white portion. Just get it a little bit more layered here. And the cool thing is about this is as you're spraying and as you're dyeing your fabrics, it really gives each bottle a distinct look. We are going to set this aside and let this dry while we move on to making our labels. Okay, here's our stamp set. And these are the two labels that we are making today. And I'll show you which stamps I pulled out to make these. So here is our This Side Up stamp. We'll be using a part of that specimen stamp. And then we will, we will be adding this number 4899 stamp. For the main stamp down here, I wanted it to be a little bit more substantial and a little thicker. So we will be making this on just a scrap piece of coffee stained index card. That will give us the thickness that I'm after. Oh, and I also forgot to pull out the label shape itself. All right, and the black ink that we are using is Ranger Archival Ink in Jet Black. That is my favorite go-to. Let's stamp the label. There we go. And the next one that I want to add, we are just using the very top of this particular stamp. So we just want the specimen portion. Again, I am going back to the black. I'm gonna pull this off just a little bit. I'm sorry if my head gets in the way of the camera, just so I can line it up at the bottom. Actually, I'm gonna give this one more try. I'm gonna pull it off even more off camera. It's difficult for me to, uh, my head doesn't fit under the camera. So this is real life. <laughs> this is real life. This is real life crafting here. So let's give that one more try. These things we have to figure out as we are filming. Right, let's give that one more try. Again, at home, we will have plenty of space to do that, but I'm just gonna pull this down just so I can work on that alignment a little bit more. There we go. We're not quite even, but we're a little bit better. I'm happy with that. We're not going for perfection. And then let's take this number 4899 and we will stamp that up above. This one's much easier because we're using the whole stamp. For the, the red label, we're using the This Side Up stamp. I am using Ranger Ink in Ladybug. And for this one, I wanted to stamp it on paper that looked a little bit different with the thought that, you know, labels are not always the same. They're not always the same paper. They don't always look the same. So I grabbed out just a scrap piece of book page here. Let's try that again. Let's go down in this corner. There we go. That's a much better imprint. Okay, and we are back. There are quite a few supplies in this project. So I will probably just be clearing off as we go. So I'm just gonna give this a little bit of fussy cut around both of the stamped images. On this one, I'm leaving a little bit of white border. So I think that's just Cool and interesting. I think it does mimic a vintage stamp that way, or a vintage label rather. And we will give this one a fussy cut. This one I'm actually going right up to the black border.
And then we are going to grab some of our Distress Oxide ink. I'm just going to use Vintage Photo. And we will get both labels and inking on the edge. And then I'll show you a little fun thing I like to do to age them up even more. So cute. So even though we were a little off-sided, it still has a very cool vintage, hopefully a little bit of an authentic look to it. Let's give this one a little bit of inking. All right, so my little trick is, what I like to do with these labels is scrunch them up. Yep, we're just, we're, we are going to scrunch it up into a little ball and flatten that out. And you can see just doing that gives it a really cool, very aged look. We will come back in and ink up some of those folds. I think looks super cool. So there's that one. I might, I might even grab my black soot too. I think we'll do that. So let's ball this one up. Let's unroll it. So hopefully you can see how cool that looks. And I will ink up some of those folds and then let's do that. I'm not sure if I did that on the others, but let's grab our black soot and just hit that a little bit, just to give it a spooky Halloween kind of grungy vibe. It looks old, it looks decayed, looks super cool. We'll hit that one with the black a little bit. Right? Very cool look. Okay, so our labels are done. Our fabric and cheesecloth is dyed. Now let's work on the bottle itself. Let's open up our pack here. And here's one of the bottles. Now, this bottle is cute just by itself, but to me, it looks too brand new. It looks too shiny, it looks too new, and I wanted to age it up as well. So what I came up with, let me grab my paper plate here. Our fabric feels pretty dry. I will lay that there. We might need to give that a little bit of dry time. And I'm just gonna grab my dirty paper plate. And what I found worked really well to age the bottle, hopefully you can see, I've already filled them um, with some fun stuff. In this case, some faux spider web. So I just grabbed a piece of sandpaper. This may be the P220, and I will look up and get a little bit more information and put that down below in the supply list, but I'm not seeing anything other than that, so that may be the grit of it. But really, any sandpaper that you may have will probably work. This is a little bit of a fine grit, but you could definitely use a uh, coarser grit, it probably would work a little bit quicker. And I'm just going to speed up this process. Okay, and we are pretty good. Hopefully you can see how scuffed up and aged that looks. I scuffed it up here on the bottom. I'll grab the other one just so you can see the shiny and then the aged. It gives it a really cool look. So I want to get this glass dust out of the way. So I will be back in a minute. I'm going to put this aside, um, toss this, and I'm going to give this a little bit of a wipe down with a damp cloth. So I will be right back. Okay, I am back. I've washed my hands. I've gotten rid of that paper plate with the glass dust. I've wiped down my bottle. I've wiped down 
my space here and let's get on to the next step. So I think let's also age up the cork a little bit. We don't want the cork to look new. As you can see, that has a little bit of an aged look. So I'm going to grab the vintage photo again and just darken that. Just make it look really kind of old and grungy. We will even grab our black soot. Yeah, much better. I'm even gonna go down here. Okay, my hands are inky, but it looks really cool. So here is the pristine one, and then here's the one where we've aged it up. So hopefully you can see, gives it a more grungy, spooky look. Okay, so this is one of the things I pulled out of my crafting stash, and I've been wanting to do a project with this for a while. I will probably be, be coming up with some paper crafts that use this, but I had this left over from making stained glass and solder jewelry. I happen to have this in my stash. This may not be something that you have. It doesn't mean you need to go out and buy it, but it is certainly cool. And I definitely think I will be using it in other paper crafting projects. Basically, it is a very thin sheet of copper and it has a sort of a sticker backing to it. I think that it would have a really fun and interesting application for paper crafting. I haven't really seen anybody using it, so we will have to come up with some other fun projects and I will link this below certainly in the supply list so I'm just going to go around and measure the mouth of the bottle here I'm going to do two pieces so I have one that sort of goes below the lip here and then I will measure out one that goes over the top it's very awkward here I'm having some issues with my wrist. I've had bouts of carpal tunnel over the years, uh, particularly being a metalsmith for so many years with stamping and hammering. I developed actually in both hands and um, both thumbs. I actually, I was actually experiencing in both hands at the same time years ago, and it flares up occasionally, but I've really been struggling with it the last couple weeks. And I think because I was ripping down a vintage dictionary I had, I kept thinking, why why is it flaring up? Why do I have it? And that was the only thing I could think of. And for me, it comes from doing repetitive things. So I think that's what caused it. So if I seem kind of a little off or shaky with things, it's just because I'm having quite a bit of pain and um, it just takes me a little bit longer to do things. So let's take off this backing here. And I did dig out my wrist brace. And I've, I have been sleeping in it. I've been wearing it on and off over the last two or three days. Okay, now I can't get this backing off. But it has been helping a lot. So you can see it's just really thin. It's just a very, very, very thin um, sheet of copper. So we'll get rid of the back here. And it's just like a sticker. It just sticks sticks right on and it sticks to this glass really well. So that's why I'm excited to try it with paper projects. Wouldn't it be really cool? Okay, so we stuck that on and then let's get our other piece here. Okay, so we're gonna take off that piece. Hopefully that was the one that went on the top again. I'm not I'm talking and not paying attention. So I'm gonna stick this kind of up over the rim. Hopefully you can see how I did that here. So it kind of goes up over the rim. I think this one I didn't quite have on the rim, but we will 
do the best we can. I guess I should have the seam in the same place, but really, you, you can't really tell once it's on here and you've sort of burnished it on. I'm really feeling that wrist. Okay. So I stuck it there, hopefully you can see, around the top. And then I'm just gonna take my finger. It's not sharp. It is super easy to bend and stick down. Okay, so you can kind of see, we're all stuck down. And then I'm going to grab my bone folder and I'm just gonna come in here and kind of burnish it. That's just a little extra step. That is what I did with my soldered jewelry. It's just a holdover technique from that. And we'll come around and we will burnish that. This is so cool. This was the absolute perfect project to dig this tape out and use. Okay, we are burnished down. In fact, let me show you so this is uh, seven, um, seven thirty seconds of an inch. This is 36 yards, but this one is super cool too. I did, I, I did think about using um, this with the wavy edge, but I thought it really maybe didn't quite go with the project, but how cool is that? Can you see it has that sort of wavy edge to it? Um, I don't know what size this is. I don't have the original packaging. Um, I'm not sure if it's 3 8 inch, but it just has a really cool look. So this will be something fun to play with in the future. Okay, so here's our copper. And then I'm actually going to ink this as well. I did some little experimenting and the other fun thing, I didn't try it for this project, but it would probably be fun to see how it would maybe react with alcohol inks. I don't know. I do have some patina. I didn't want to get that out because it's sort of chemicals and whatnot, but I do have a number of patinas that will color um, the solder to make it, you know, green patina and black and grungy. Um, maybe that's something that we'll play with in the future, but again, those are sort of uh, liquid chemicals and I didn't want to get them out. But hopefully you can see, it's just sort of knocked down the brightness of the copper. And then maybe let's grab a little bit of the black too. And that just kind of knocks it down, just so it's not so shiny. And hopefully you can see that right? It's, it's definitely a lot more dull. Okay, so there is our top. And then let's see, let's see if we are dry here with our fibers. Yep, we are pretty dry. So let's work on the, actually, let's work on the inside. I am skipping ahead. So for the inside of this one, we are doing kind of a spidery theme. And I dug out my bag, my huge bag of spider web. I don't even know where I picked this up. So we'll be adding some of that to the inside. And then I also had some of this, I guess it's like a wood, like a wood shaving, like a wood fiber. So I'm going to tear this up in little strips. Again, you could use moss, you could use shredded paper, or you could completely skip this step. But I thought it gave sort of a cool, spooky laboratory look. In fact, I should show you <laughs> what I did for the moth bottle, which was kind of funny, but I think kind of cool. So I'm just sort of, ripping this into smaller pieces. So I will fast forward through this. Okay, there we go. I, it was a bit very fast for you, but we're very slow for me. We're trying to work with this uh, wrist situation. So I just crumbled it up and put some smaller pieces down here on the bottom. And then we will grab some of this 
spider web. We really don't need very much. Little, a little goes a long way. Let me actually grab my tweezers here. Let's stick that down in there. Let's add a little bit more. You could also do cotton ball. You could use um, like quilt batting. These are fun projects to just really think about what you have. Um, I did this also because I happen to have the little spiders, so I thought it would be a cute play on that. Okay, I think we are looking, we are looking pretty good. Let me pull out that top. We will stick our cork in. So I think we're doing well. That looks really cute, right? Oh, I wanted to show you. So this one was funny because, well, not funny, but because I had the um, vintage mothball label, I did the same thing. I put some of that wood, um, wood strip fibers down on the bottom and I actually made little tiny mothballs. So I took a cotton ball and I just... I cut it and I um, tore it into little strips and then I wet my fingers with some water, just a spritz of water, and I just made little balls. So I just, um, you know, watered my fingers or watered the plate and made little balls and then I came back and I spritzed them with some of this homemade alcohol ink and then just kind of rolled them around on the paper plate. And that's how I got, I don't know that mothballs are grungy, but I knew they needed to be small because we're working in such miniature. Hopefully you can see that. So that's how, that's how I did the mothballs on that in case you want to try that. Okay, so here is our bottle. And I am going to, next thing I'm gonna grab is some Mod Podge. And I'm just using matte. If you had the shiny, it would probably work well. You can water down some white, white glue, some Eileen's Tacky Glue watered down would probably work well. We don't need much, we just need a little bit for this. All right, and I am going to just cut myself a little strip of this. And kind of open it up. Grab, I need to get a cloth out here. This is very messy. I'm gonna grab a little paintbrush and I'm just gonna paint a little bit of that Mod Podge on the top of the bottle and on the top of the cork. And then just sort of lay down this cheesecloth. Let's stretch this out a little bit more. And because we've used the oxide inks, it is reactivating those a little bit but that just adds to the grunge. It adds to the look of all of it because moisture, anything wet or moisture will reactivate those inks. I will just paint that on the bottle itself and then go, so it's kind of like we're decoupaging. We're decoupaging with the cheesecloth. It's very similar to that. And you can have some pieces be loose. You can lay them down. Really, it's however you want it to look. So let's get, let's do a little bit more over the top. I'm not sure I did that on the other one, but I think that would have a really cool look. And you don't see a lot of the copper through. You just see a little bit of peak. You might not even, it might not even show up as well for all of you on the camera, but definitely in person, it has a really cool look. 
And if you didn't have these little bottles, you certainly could substitute um, a bottle, like an upcycle bottle, something left over from, you know, a food jar, really sky's the limit. And if you used a larger bottle, the copper would really show. And you get so much in those packages, it would really go a long way. Okay, so we've kind of laid that on. I think that looks good. I think we're kind of grungy. Hopefully you can see, and you can still see the copper peeking through. So I think that's really cool. All right, let me put my brush in water, and then let's grab a strip of this, grab my fabric scissors. Probably be a little bit easier on my wrist. And I'm just going to rip that down. So I just, this will, this is so much, this will go a long way. And then I'm just going to tie this around the bottle. So I'm just gonna drop down, you could tie it around the cork. Really, it's all a matter of preference. But I'm just going to tie that around. And you don't even need to do a knot, but maybe I will come back and do that. So I've just, as you can see, I've just tied it around. It's just another layer of texture. We will give that a cut. And this bottle may end up looking very different from my other ones. It's just, it's just a matter of playing and having fun. Okay, I like the way that looks. Just looking to see if I want to layer Another little piece on here, I might. Yeah, you know what I think I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take this little scrap right here and just layer a little bit more on here because we are playing and we are having fun and we are experimenting. is the fun of all this. And we're gonna tack that down. Yeah, I think that gives a little bit more of a base for our spider. This one I think I even layered, let's do that. Let's grab a little bit of this. Maybe we'll even layer, let's grab this. Uh, let's grab a little bit of the purple. We'll layer that on. So cool. Oh, I like that. I'm glad I put that piece on there. Just gives it a little bit. I like how it's sort of hanging down there. Okay, I think we are good. Let's put this aside. Okay, let's grab our spiders. I posted... <laughs> I made a community post yesterday. It literally took me close to an hour to find these spiders. I knew I had them. I had used them in some other Halloween crafts and some assemblages. I've had them um, for several years. I have been priding myself on the fact that I've really been working on getting my paper crafting supplies nice and organized, but um, for those of you that don't know, I also make assemblages. Um, it isn't something that I have done lately, but I do have a ton of assemblage uh, craft type supplies, but I'm not very organized. I need to work on getting those organized, but it literally took me an hour to find these and I was sweating, I was getting frustrated. And the worst thing is I actually, the box that they were in, they were with, um, they were in a place that made sense with my Halloween picks, like cupcake picks, my plastic picks. And I think I looked in that box several times, but maybe because they were small, they were down at the bottom and I didn't see them. And 
my daughter even walked in and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't find my spider. She was looking at me a little bit crazy. And she's like, well, where, maybe you put them with something that's similar. Well, of course I did. They were, <laughs> they were under all the Halloween picks, but that was, yeah, that was a little frustrating. I think I really need to go through and label all my supplies. They are spread kind of willy-nilly. I have some in dressers. I have some in bins out in the garage. I still have some that are in the cabinet next to me here in my dining room slash crafting area. So that is that is a work towards. But at least now we do know where the spiders are. So I'm just using Fabri-Tac to glue the spider on. Obviously, Hot glue would work really well. I just didn't want to plug in my hot glue gun. So we are using Fabri-Tac and it worked really well. All right, and there is our spider. We're even getting a little bit of the threads that you get with hot glue. <laughs> okay, let's put the top on that. Okay, now let's do our labels. So I think it helped to glue our spider on. Oh my goodness, look what I just realized. I just made a huge discovery. So these, these are different size bottles. How did I not see that earlier? Oh my goodness, I will be right back. I'm gonna go grab my other container. Okay, here is the other one. <gasps> I didn't even notice that when I bought them. So here's the other container. Yeah, these are, are these smaller or the same? Yeah, these are definitely smaller. I don't wanna open them up because I still need to put a picture in my thumbnail. Does it even say on here? It doesn't say. Oh my goodness. Yeah, these are taller. So I must, I ended up with two sets of the small and one of the large. I didn't even realize that. Hopefully our uh, labels will still look, still look okay. It's just going to give it a different look. Maybe we'll come in and add a little bit more of that gauze just to fill in the space, as you can see, um, just because the bottle is a little bit bigger. But I think it's still good. Okay, we are going to use the Mod Podge to glue on the labels as well. I found that worked really well. Okay, we are getting bare bones with our matte Mod Podge. Okay, I have enough. So I'm just gonna come and paint on the back of this first larger label with the Mod Podge. Pick that up with our paintbrush and then figure out where we want to position that. I think we will do that. That's a good location. And just sort of press that down. Doesn't that look cool? Oh my gosh, that label looks so good. And let's do a little bit of a dry fit here. I think that's good. We'll position that a little bit higher so that it takes up the space on the bottle. That was like a really cool discovery. And I love because two of these bottles are a little bit similar, um, but I like that they're different sizes. And these will be going on my tiered tray. I also promised that I would do a video showing my Halloween tiered tray. And this year I wanna go with like a really spooky, um, kind of laboratory, kind of grungy. I sort of have that in my mind. I had picked up the plastic bones as well. And then I picked up three packs of the, 
the amber, the little amber bottles. So I may zhuzh those up a little bit more. We'll see when I start putting my tray together. And I may end up doing something with the bones, we'll see. But I will either do a separate video on those or I might combine it into the tear tray video of putting the tear tray together. So we will just see. <gasps> so cute. Do we want to put, let's, you know what? Let's do a little bit more. Oh, sometimes I just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> these projects sometimes it is hard to know when is enough enough but let's add a little bit more I feel like I want something to kind of come down the back of the bottle here a little bit more just because it's taller let's see here just yeah I like that just so it's sort of filling up the space the height of the bottle. Whoops, having a hard time sticking that down. Let's get those little threads stuck down there. That's cool. I like how some of the threads are overlapping the labels. Whoops, all fingers today. And glue some of that down. Yeah, that looks really cool. And let me grab a little bit more of that. Let's see if we wanna put some on the front. Why not? Although I might not have a lot of Mod Podge left here. Let's spread that out a little bit. Yep, I like that. And that will use up the last of our Mod Podge. At least what I was able to get out of the bottle. And we'll just kind of tack down that a little bit. So cool. Okay, Julie, stop playing. <laughs> stop playing with it. Okay. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. So here is the one that we made today. Here is my original from when I was playing. And I think these are gonna look cool together because they're a little bit different with the moth. I love the discovery that we figured out that there are two different sizes. Maybe there were even three different sizes, who knows? And then this is the other prototype that we came up with the spider. And because I made the labels a little bit different, they're even a little bit different. That may end up being a really fun trio for my tiered tray. We will have to see. I thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed this little project. It's a little bit different. Usually we do paper crafting and junk journal type crafts together, but I, I knew when I found these bottles that we had to come up with something fun. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you're not already subscribed, I hope you consider doing so. I post regular videos throughout the week. Sometimes they're hauls, um, thrift store finds. I'm always on the hunt for vintage craft supplies, books, all kinds of cool stuff. I, even, even my neighbors and friends are on, on the hunt for me. And I also go live every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, my time. And I call it Vintage Craft and Chat. It's my opportunity to hang out with all of you, go live, chit chat, um, come up with a fun craft for us to do together. And I always include the supply list for, the, for those project as well. So you can either craft along with me live or you can craft at your leisure in the replay. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks for hanging out with me today. And I hope you have an awesome week. 
and I hope you feel inspired.